I've never seen myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is I'm willing to die in the process of acquiring skill. Working on on your body is the beginning of everything. You know, your mind starts to work better, you're a, a better husband, a better father, a better friend, and life is just better. I didn't forget, but I didn't pay the IRS. In my mind, I mean, I wasn't like trying to avoid paying taxes. I was just like, oh damn, they need their money. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan-level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and use it to make a difference. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from being the son of a school board administrator and refrigerator repairman to becoming one of the most bankable stars in Hollywood. He's Will Smith, and here's my take on his top 10 Rules of Success, Volume 5. Also, if you want to know what Will Smith and other entrepreneurs have to say about building unstoppable confidence, check out my 254 Confidence series, where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you a short 30-second to 5-minute video for free to help build your confidence. Check out the link in the description below. I was excited about uh, taking a shot. The fact sure. that it was so strange, you know, as an artist, it was... It was uh, fun to get out on that on that uh, limb and hoping it doesn't break under your feet. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, maintain positivity. He was always challenged for that, right? Like, oh, you're soft, you're different than yeah, the rappers. Ah, your positivity was always challenged. Like, yeah. people always wanted you to justify being positive, Being positive so right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was a, that was a, uh, a, a difficult time coming up because it's, it's like, I'm from, I'm from Philly, right? So during that time in Philly, it was Joe Frazier and Rocky. So mm -hmm. a fist fight was common. So you grew up, like, <laughs> right. you grew up, you grew up. Chuck, yeah, Chuck D used to, he called it Pug City. Mm. He's like, Pug City. He's like, he was like, Chuck was like, damn, you can't go to Philly without getting in a fight. Right. So it was like, I grew up in that. So for me to, uh, it was always difficult for people, you know, to say I was soft and I was, you know, my, my, my music was cotton candy and all of that. So I, I always wanted to fight to try to, to, to prove myself, but the be, fighting yourself to maintain positivity is the hardest fight you ever gonna have, mm. right? And it's like that struggle to just stay my course, to, you know, be the person in the world that, that I wanted to be no matter what people said. And it was, uh, uh, I started to call it offensive positivity, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, I wasn't gonna be on defense with my positivity, I was gonna be on offense with it. Rule number two, seize your opportunities. Me and Jeff had come out with our smash hit, Parents Just Don't Understand, we made a bunch of money, we won a Grammy, album was triple platinum. I had motorcycles and cars. I called the Gucci store in Atlanta, and I was like, hey, will y'all close it down if I bring my friends? And I'm smiling, but that's stupid. We released our next album, and it was like, a flop. It was a tragedy. It went like double plastic. I had spent most of my money, like all of it. I spent all my money. And I didn't forget, but I didn't pay the IRS. In my mind, I mean, I wasn't like trying to avoid paying taxes. I was just like, oh damn, they need their money. The IRS took all, took all that stuff, so I was like, broke, broke, broke. Being famous and broke is a shitty combination. Because you're still famous and people recognize you, but they recognize you while you're sitting next to them on the bus. And the stuff they ask you to sign on a bus, you know, like, oh, can you sign my baby? That's a Sharpie. I, I probably shouldn't just write on the baby with that. Oh, you too big to sign my baby. Well, no, nah, I mean, you know, so I signed it. So I was like laying around and my girlfriend was like, Dude, we're not doing this. Like, you're not just gonna be laying around this house all day. You're gonna go do something. And I was like, What? 
What I'm supposed to do? Go where people is is doing it. Wh- where people doing it? Go to the Arsenio Hall show. Just go stand around at the Arsenio Hall show. Yes. That's stupid. Wake it up! So I went to the Arsenio Hall show and I met a dude named Benny Medina. And Benny Medina is the real life Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, except he actually went from Watts to Beverly Hills. Same basic concept, way shorter distance. I meet Benny and he pitches me the idea for this show and I'm like, you know, I'm I'm not an actor. I'm like, cool. And he says, hey, you know, I want you to meet Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones is producing with me. So I find myself at Quincy's and it's actors and artists and celebrities and politicians, it's like everybody at Quincy's house. It's like the whiz without the costume. So Benny walks me in and introduced me to Quincy. I'm like, hey Q, what's up, man? He's like, hey man, you know, I saw your music videos. I love, I love what you're doing, I love what you're doing. Tell me your rap name again. They call me the Fresh Prince. All right, good, that's what we gonna call the show. And he handed me a screenplay for a failed Morris Day pilot. Like, I don't have the time. So, I need you to do this. I need you to go ahead, take a few minutes, take 10 minutes, study the script, and I'm gonna I'm clear all the stuff out the living room, and we're gonna have everybody sit down in the living room, we're gonna do an audition. He had movers that could reset his furniture. I was like, this dude is real. So he goes out and tells everybody, come on, come on, come on. And I was like, hey Q, hold up, man, hold up. I'm not ready to do no audition. And he said, oh, all right, all right. All right. Uh, well, what you need? Tell me what you need. Just set the meeting for a week and I could do it. He said, yeah, yeah, you know, Brandon Tartikoff, the head of NBC, is out there. I'll get him to schedule for next week. And then you know what's gonna happen? Something gonna come up and then he's gonna have to reschedule. Oh, yeah, yeah, so three, so three weeks from now, Q, we can do it three weeks from now. I said, yeah, 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 three weeks from now be good. Or you could take 10 minutes right now and you can change your life forever. And I was like, F- it then. Yes, give me 10 minutes. I said yes, and I let it rip. And I got to the end, and everybody is clapping. Quincy looks at Brandon Tartikoff, the head of NBC. Did you like it? And Brandon said, yeah, yeah, I liked it, Quincy. He says, no, did you like it? And he's like, yeah, I liked it. He's like, good, you're his lawyer. Draw me up something right now. Rule number three, work on your body. I used to be able to, to eat whatever I want, and then in six weeks, I could get in any shape. I wanted to get into, but that's not the case anymore. We're, we're around the 12 or 14 week uh, uh, mandatory uh, training to, to do anything, but, but I love it. I'm, I, enjoy, um, I enjoy the discipline of it. For me, working on, on your body is the beginning of everything. You know, your mind starts to work better, you're uh, a better husband, a better father, a better friend, and life is just, better when you, you know, care for your body at the highest level. Rule number four, be obsessed. You told the famous story about how you kind of backed into acting Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you start making these movies. And I forget that Bad Boys actually came before Independence Day, right? Yeah, and then, yeah, Bad Boys. Independence Day just was like one of the biggest of all time. Like, what was that transition like for you? To be yeah, like a real know, actor and like the biggest actor in the game. No, nah, it was, it was, um... That was like the first real um, goal, like that in terms of setting goals. I was like, I want to be the biggest movie star in the world, mm. right? And every, uh, up until that point, everything was like it was fun and it was happening, and we were creating in Jeff's mom's basement, and yeah. it was mm-hmm. successful. But that was like when I moved into acting. That was the first time I started uh, applying uh, skill to my my talents right and you know i always look i look at skill and talent separately like Pete, you're born with talent you know it's like there's certain things that you just do naturally you were gifted with a talent and you have it um but skill is acquired through discipline and you know i've never seen myself as particularly talented, where I excel is I'm willing to die in the process of acquiring skill. Mm. Like, it's, you know, when I put my obsessive yeah. mind on just something, the I'm just dying, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's You're like, not gonna work you. You also said ridiculous and sickening work ethic. Sickening work <laughs> ethic, exactly. It's like, you know, so for me, to be a movie star was the first thing yeah. that I ever really wanted like that and set my He was like right, Schwarzenegger, the, Stallone, Bruce Schwartz, Willis. All of them, I I'm was like, y'all. I was like, you know, because when I, when I looked, I always felt like there, there weren't a lot of people I saw do things that I felt like I couldn't do, 
right? When I, when I look at people and I see things, um, I, don't, I don't feel like I can't. Whether or not I will is something different, but I don't ever feel like I can't. Rule number five, have a strong why. Anytime I put something in the world, I, I'm, I'm always connecting to an idea. I'm, I'm always asking, why am I making this? What, why? So I'm putting this out in the world, why? Mm -hmm. So with, with concussion, Dr. Bennett Omalu was deeply connected to tell the truth. And he said that truth doesn't have a side. And that's what he kept saying. I thought that was such a powerful what that idea. That there, you know, whose side are you on? Are you a Republican or a Democrat? I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to tell the truth. truth. The truth doesn't have a side. Rule number six, deal with rejection. Rejection is everywhere. You know, we all deal with the, the... You don't anymore. Well, <laughs> oh my, sure yeah, don't. me worst of all, me worst of all. You know, I think the, the idea of rejection is relative. I mean, if you, you take a, a, you know, a kid in a small town and somebody posts something negative about them and all of their friends laugh, you know, that's the worst rejection a human being can experience. It's not, you know, for that kid, it's not any less than for my kids who read it in a, on a comment page. You know, it's, it's emotionally, it's, it's the same. My kids grew up in this world, so they're much more acclimated to the difficulties of this world, but it doesn't make it uh, emotionally... Um, uh, more difficult or more painful than for any other child who has to deal with it. Rule number seven, be authentic. You're like the prince, but now you're the king of Instagram. Man. I know. Right now. <laughs> so it's like, how come you've embraced social media in this way? Like, because for the longest, you know, you have this mystique behind you. Well, in, you know, when I, when I started, the, the, the only way to be a movie star was through uh, distance and mystery and mystique, right? That was the 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 way is that you Pass know. Down, it, yeah, 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 you could yeah. see me on July fourth in the movie theater, or <laughs> right. you're not gonna see me, right. right? So that was the way. Keeping that distance was how you maintained uh, star power. Star mm -hmm. power, yeah. and in the last five years, that shifted uh, much more to a friendship model, like people support. Um, artists that they feel like they know thoroughly that they're friends, right? So that the social media, the the daily interaction is much more like a family friendship kind of interaction. Mm. That is an audience demand for uh, for you know their loyalty. Mm -hmm. But is there such thing as revealing too much? Um, not in this world. Mm. Um, too much that are, that's it's personal. You know, mm. like it's it's. What can you handle? You know, I think one of the major, um, one of the, the beautiful parts of social media that I think is a beautiful evolutionary thing is that social media demands uh, authenticity, mm. right? So social media pushes you more and more into having to reveal what's true. Yeah, and because really if you don't, you know, TMZ is going to, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> you know, so it's, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I'm, and I'm actually enjoying the push, mm -hmm. right? Nobody's happy who doesn't get to be themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the eyes and ears of the world are starting to demand more and more authenticity, where mm -hmm. you got to say what's true yeah. for you and live or die by what that is. So I'm enjoying the, uh, the social demand for authenticity. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. coming into a space. How, how have you maintained your authenticity? Because, I mean, you come from Philly, you've gone through everything. Like, your journey's been crazy. Like, how have you maintained that? Um, you know, it's really interesting. It's, it's like... The, the idea, I, I, I haven't maintained my authenticity per se. Mm. I've maintained my character, right? I've maintained um, my beliefs, character in two senses. I've maintained my character of Will Smith and I've maintained my personal character of what I believe in. Mm. So, but in terms of authenticity, um, the character, Will Smith, signs every autograph, 
and is always happy and wants to see the fans and is always in a good mood. Mm -hmm. And that's actually not often authentic, mm. right? I actually, I do want to slap some, somebody, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> every once in a while. So in terms of authenticity, I, I have successfully maintained positivity and now I'm working more to maintain authenticity. I'm granting myself the freedom to not give a f when I don't give a f yeah. right? And now I'm working into a space of much more uh, authenticity. Rule number eight, face your fears. Something that probably a lot of people don't know about me, uh, I don't f with the ocean. The ocean is like the ultimate woman. She is beautiful and she will nourish you, but she will tear you to shreds also. The ocean is my worst fear. I don't know what it is or where it came from, but there's something about not being able to breathe. I've tried snorkeling before and I was hyperventilating. <laughs> My 50th birthday is this year. I just wasn't gonna go into the back nine of my life without having attacked my fear of the ocean. So we're about to scuba dive the Great Barrier Reef. You know, I've never scuba divin, scuba dove, scuba, I've never been scuba divish before. So we're taking the boat ride out and we go through a storm. So I'm ready. I'm ready. This is stupid. All right, I'm not going. <laughs> Come on, this will be the hardest part of your day. I know, right? Is it okay to punch sharks in the face? You're like, back up with your shark ass. Back up with your shark ass. Shark ass, back up. Shark jab, shark jab. Yeah. I got it. Shark! Come on! I'm not doing another dive today. <laughs> the question isn't can you handle the situation? The question is can you handle your mind? Can you manage the thoughts and the emotions that are trying to poison your progress? Forget managing the situation. Manage your mind. Training your mind to sit calmly in the eye of the storm. Rule number nine, inspire others to succeed. You know, growing up, my mother and father and grandmother demanded no less of me than to represent the family every time I stepped out in a way that was helpful to others. The city gave him his start. He's worked hard and the city has worked hard for him. Knowing that this man is from West Philly opens eyes for them, they, they, it opens their lens. When you're in Philadelphia, you see a lot of things in the youth and the neighborhoods that not always positive and I think Seeing that will, will motivate you all in its own because you're always going to want something better for yourself. You don't have enough role models out here. You got too many kids being led astray, thinking the wrong things is what's good. They grow up too fast. Mm -hmm. You need people that's putting that out there like you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. It's so much easier being yourself. When you are a young kid and you walk into school and you see images like this, it makes you aspire to want to be that person, right? What he's done in his life vibrate all your overseas to touch you and to touch people yeah, around the world. But yeah. this right here will affect people. Yeah. The main thing you did, let me tell you the yeah. main detail. Yeah. You got Will's ears right. <laughs> this man who is an icon is looking at GLA. So my kids every day will see this image and know that 
You can be whatever you want to be. This is a man who grew up in Philadelphia, went to Overbrook High School up the street, was a part of this world that he now is looking at us and telling my children, you can be whatever you want to be. That's, it's just so powerful. If you're a kid here growing up now and you see this every day, it can give you a real understanding that this guy is me. You know, he lived here, he grew up here, he had the same chances as me, the same possibilities as me, the same everything. And he's being painted on a wall because he's done something incredible with his life. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is ask awesome questions. We are about to make history. We are doing an IG Live to the International Space Station. It, oh yeah, and see, now that's the thing. Look, I'm doing it like that. Everybody can't do an interview to the International Space Station in house shoes. It, in terms of like the, the simple basics, right? So you on Earth, people have to poop. You're like, it's important to poop on earth, right? So when you're up there, I see your microphone <laughs> floating. I need to understand what you do with that. Like, how do you manage that? Well, are you sure you want to talk about this, uh, this problem? Because it is pretty challenging. Um, <laughs> I like to say you can have a good day in the bathroom and you can have a really bad day in the bathroom. And you, really, you hope for the good days, but bad days can be challenging. On Earth, we talk about the, the, you know, the Mile High Club. Has anyone, you know, attempted, for research purposes, has anyone attempted, you know, the process of procreating the human species uh, in space? All right, well, similar to the last question, I'll just say, are you sure we want to talk about this on the interview? <laughs> I'm just, you know, I, I'm a man of the people, Drew. I'm a man of the people. And it's important to me to ask the questions that the people want the answers to. I'll just say, as far as I know, I have no knowledge of those tests being done. Uh, <laughs> but I can imagine that that would present some unique opportunities. Now I've got a really special bonus clip from Will Smith on how to not chase awards that I think you're really gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to move from just watching another video to actually taking action in your business and in your life. So with these questions, write down the answer in your notebook at home, talk about them with a friend or leave them in the comments below. Here we go. Question number one, what current fear do you need to face? Question number two, who can you inspire to succeed? And question number three, what is your strong why? Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon and enjoy the bonus clip. We won the first uh, Grammy yep. ever given to, to yeah. rappers. And we boycotted it right. that year. So yeah. they, the, um, the Grammys weren't uh, televising the rap portion. And we felt like, you, you know, we had done enough that deserved to be in the televised portion of the on show. TV. I know, right? <laughs> and they, they really, they, um, they, everybody was still scared of rap music at the time and thought it was a fad and all of that stuff. So uh, we, we uh, received our Grammy in in absentia. <laughs> I've never used that word before. I like that. <laughs> in absentia. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> we, yeah, we wasn't there. Yeah. We wasn't there. But were you still happy that you received that Grammy, that award? Was it like bittersweet? Um, you know, I've, I've never really been awards minded, right? So I like it, everybody, you, you prefer to win than lose. You got four, right? right? If you got four, four. four I have no, I actually don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I actually don't know. You know, Jeff asked me all the time, like, he's like, where is your Grammy? I was like, dude, I have no idea. Wow. I have no, and it's like, I'm just not awards minded. I'm much more. That box office. Uh, box office, week. yeah. I'm always, yeah, <laughs> opening weekend. Opening weekend, yeah. I'm, I'm much more. Um, <laughs> It's like total grossing. Total worldwide. gross. Like I like winning at the box office. I like numbers. I like sales. Um, and awards are cool. Yeah. But it's like I never, I never really, um, I never really got into Focus the excitement that. of winning an award. Mm. 
Um, it's like with you know with you know I've been nominated for uh, Academy Awards twice, and it's like it's it's nothing. It's like well, even that feeling with the with the film stuff that's never yeah. It's like enough. I like box office assassination. Altruistic, world domination, honey empire, right? I'm grateful. I understand why I'm here. I think because I am so open. I wanted to think and see. It's a bloody brief life. All of you have the potential for enormous success. If you want to know what Gary V, DJ Khaled, Oprah, and others know about empire building that most people miss, check out the link in the description for a free bonus video.